everybody welcome to another weekend here on Rana's Radar I'm here at the Street Machine Nationals first time super excited I'm here with Liz how's it going hun it's going great yeah we've had a lot of people uh, waiting at the gate this morning to come in to to see all the cool cars we also had a lot of participants early and, and ready to yesterday actually ready to come in with all their classic cars that's so. what I heard yeah that's what yeah. it was on all social media as well so this is pretty big it's my first time mm -hmm. what are we what is Street Machine Nationals so Street Machine Nationals is actually a Bonnier event. Uh, we picked it up from some locals uh, a long time ago. It's been around for generations. Um, we have guys here that have parked in the same exact spot as their dad wow. and the same exact spot as their grandpa. They come and they go to the same spot every single year, same corner on the fairgrounds here in Decoin, Illinois. So yeah. That gets me so excited because I love seeing different generations and I hope I find some of those people who have been here since with their grandfather and their dad because yeah. that's what it's all about. Now we're here at the DeCoin State Fairgrounds. Correct. So what are some of the activities expected for the weekend? So we have a burnout contest. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sign up for that Friday, today, Saturday, and Sunday morning, but it starts at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Okay. Uh, we also have a swap meet going on, so any kind of cool car parts, anything that has a car logo on it, yeah. it's going to be at the swap meet. It's going to be at the swap meet. It's going to be at the swap meet. Now for people wanting to get involved and registered, what are some of the criteria for the cars? The years? Literally no, no criteria. So there were people that were on Facebook that were like, oh, you're gonna laugh if I bring my 2004 Challenger. We're like, nope, bring them all. No. Bring one and all cars are available and ready to come. On-site registration, it's gonna be at gate four, so you can always come in and register on-site if you wanna come in. If you know you got off work early and you decided you wanna come, you can certainly come and register a car. Um, if you wanna just come and be a spectator, you can come and spectate and hang out and look at all the cars and talk to people. It's very Midwest nice here, so. Nice, it's beautiful. We've got great weather. Now, this is not the only show, so for People sitting at home thinking, goodness, if I had known, I would have gone. There's another show happening soon. Where there is. is that? That's going to be in St. Paul, Minnesota. So that's going to be next month in July. Uh, forgive me for the dates. Uh, they're blanking for my mind right now. We got that's a lot all right. Of shot. Where can <laughs> they go to get information and yeah. to get registered? You're going to go to streetmachinenationals.com. All of the information for Street Machines is going to be on there. 21st through the 23rd of July. There we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hey, I yeah. appreciate this. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Liz. All right, everybody. Now, this is one of the reasons that I am chasing these car shows. The cars look great. I love the engines and that sound behind me. I'm absolutely loving it. But more importantly than that, and you lot know this, is the stories. The stories that is connected with these classic cars. So I'm going to have a chat with Francine and we're going to learn more about her 55 Willy because she's an absolute car nut. <laughs> Francine, come stand here in front of the 55 Willy. How are you today? I'm doing great. So good to see you and thank you for sharing your story with me. First of all, tell us what classic do you have in front of you? Uh, it's you. a 55 uh, Willys Jeep and uh, it belonged to my husband. First it belonged to my son. My husband ended up getting it. We had a chance, he sold it, we had a chance to buy it back and we jumped at it. And him and Jason worked on it together, getting it all reconstructed back together. So he did a full restoration on this? Yeah, on that. Okay. And um, how long did your husband have this for? And did um, a Butch have the Willie for? He's had it for at least, um, he owned it one time before, and then he then he bought it back from this guy uh, that had passed away, and, he, and then that's when we started back work on it. Jason. How long did Jason, or how long did Butch own this this vehicle, approximately? You got you and Butch, ten, ten or fifteen years. Ten or fifteen, 10 or 15, 15 years. years, I would At say. At least. Oh, no. Now, yeah, Frank. I, I told her that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. You lost him last year. Yes, last November or Thanksgiving last year. Before we have a look at the Willie in detail, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yours and his relationship? Okay, Butch and I grew up together, cross straight from each other. It was my first puppy love. I was crazy about him. I used to pester him. I mean, he was older than me, but anyway, then when he went to Vietnam, I did ride him and everything. And one night we were out, actually, 
at a tavern. Sorry. No, that's fine. Why, and, why would you be sorry? <laughs> and anyway, we hooked up. Yep. And the next thing I know, he asked me to marry him. I did. And then when we got married, and we got married on Labor Day weekend and went to the U.S. Nationals. Okay. And anyway, he was asking me, he said, where do you want to go for the honeymoon? And I said, you may be crazy. You may think I'm crazy. I said, I want to go to the drag race at U.S. Nationals. You wanted to go to the drag race? And he said, really? And I said, yeah. And we did. We went to U.S. Nationals. We stayed there like Wednesday through uh, the Tuesday after Labor Day, and we actually, of all places, camped out in a tent. Nice. And all that. We had one every year until last year for his, that's where we went, drag races. Every for, year for your anniversary, yeah. you went to drag races. Yeah, we went to the U.S. Nationals because that's where it started. That's where and it started. That, so, yes. Wow, there is so many memories, and again, I'm sorry for your loss. That's a terrible loss. You've been married for over 50 years. Yes, I know that. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm 70, so I, I've known him 65 years. I mean, I was five years old when I first, you know, and I never could get him out of my mind. Of course. And uh, on that, but yeah, it really tore me up because we had so much in common and all that. You did have a lot in common. Now, your passion with cars and drag racing, where does that come from? Actually, from my dad. Uh, that's what he did. He done mechanical work, and we used to go. He used to take me to the drag races or either stock car races. Drag races was more in my blood, and the first time we had ever went to the U.S. Nationals, and I want to say it was Minnesota, and I was like six years old, wow. and I got hooked on it. I mean, to watch the cars go down the drag strip, I mean, it just fascinated me. And I it mean, never left you. All it never, years, all these never years. I mean, you. it was in my blood. It's in my son's blood. All of us do the drag racing. I. I always help with the body work, paint work on the vehicles. I mean, it was just, because I was with my dad all the time. He taught me, and then Butch taught me. <laughs> and it's not only the classics that you love. Now, before we look at the 55, and I've said this three times, why don't we have a look at your driver now? Take me over, Frenzy. Okay, and I, I do have another car. It's a 67 RT. Dodge RT with okay. 671 blower. Right now it's in the body shop and it's a Pink Panther pink. Wow. And I have been down the drag strip with it several times. But, uh, See, oh, la ladies and here. gentlemen, this right here is an absolute inspiration. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Not only are you a Mopo girl, I do love oh, the yes, charges. But we've never ever owned anything in our life that Mo powers and actually the motor in that one is a Mopower motor, a Dodge. Wow, <laughs> and everybody have a look at Francine's daily. This is a 2014 Challenger. This is what you drive. Yeah. Well, it's got like 1,100 miles on it. It was <laughs> a birthday present. Uh, no, it was an anniversary present from my husband. On, on, Last on, year? Yeah. Uh, no, on our 45th. On your 45th. what it was for, so, yeah. Being here at the Street Nationals with the car that he got for your anniversary and the car that he actually worked on, how do you feel? Excited, happy to have been with him to do all this work with him and the repairs and everything to put all the vehicles together. Yes. Um, yeah, that, you know, that was my life. He was my life doing this. And, um, and actually the 67 I have, uh, we did it from bottom to top. Together? Together, yes. Wow. And my son helped, I mean, because he was bred into that too with the drag racing, painting, bodywork, automotives and all that. The unfortunate um, story with life is that people do pass away. Right. But On that. we do have the classics to remember them. Right, and, and that's what memories. I told him when I got this one, I said, you know, Hawaii is a memory, but I said, this is something I can keep and cherish. Keep and cherish and, and sit right. in there and remember yeah. those memories of him actually being there with yeah. you as well. And, when, and then he patted me on the 
back, that day he's seen all that. And he said, well, you know, I agree with you. He said, I didn't want to go to Hawaii anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you made the right choice. <laughs> oh, yeah, on that. I'll never forget the shock he had on his face when he got out of the vehicle and seen that there with all these purple laser, <laughs> pink ones and wow. purple on it. So. I love it, Francie. Let's have a look at the Willie now. Okay. 1955. Yes. As soon as I was walking, I didn't even know about your story, but this did catch my eye. Yeah. Oh, no. Take a look, everyone. My son, we're wanting to do some more finishing up to it. And These are never done, but no. it is looking no. immaculate. Yeah. Is this restored back to original? Uh, everything but uh, the motor, like I said, we put a uh, Mopar motor in it. We pulled the uh, original four-cylinder flathead out of this uh, 55 Willys and then uh, we uh, we took the drivetrain out of a um, it was a 1973 Ram Charger four-wheel drive. Okay. And we put the motor and the transmission and the transfer case in this truck. Nice. Uh, uh, her her husband that has passed away, my brother-in-law Butch, he and I done this, and the boy Jason Sheehorn, we done all this, and uh, we all she even paints. She used to yeah. paint. I painted this though, but. Uh, we're all painters, and we, we've all built this truck over the years. But like she said, we're 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 not for sure exactly how many um, years they've owned at this time. But this is the second time Butch brought it back. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and and do you do story. you do you know the uh, fascination that Butch had with the Willys? Like why this particular car? Oh, he loved it. He, he loved just it. loved it because it's a pickup truck. Yep. Yeah. A pickup truck, and and he was always into older pickup trucks too. Back in the day when her and him was younger, yes. You, you can't beat it. I mean, just looking at this here as well. One of the things that I like about the vintage pickups is the bed. Yeah. Because they're a lot smaller. This is done by Jack Phillips, one of Butch's best friends from Mount Vernon, Illinois. He done all this hand work. And me and Butch done all the body work on it. And the fenders are, uh, are um, how I, what I say, um, um, root beer, root beer, yep. root beer brown. And this is... Uh, I call it 76 Corvette yellow, but I believe it's... Um, I can see that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And then we've got, of course, uh, that, in memory... In memory of Butch Sheehorn. Uh, Jason called him Pops. I just called him Butch. Um, but he was my mentor. He, Jason's mentor, everybody. But yes, we worked hard on all these. It's course, so nice. she bought that new, but we have another one. It's a 67 Dodge RT and it's called a Pink Panther and she owns that, but it's not down here. It's, uh, I believe it's in the body shop right now. Yep. I do have a picture of it if you want cool. to see it later. Let's see if the camera. That's for me. Oh my goodness. I have seen a couple of Pink Panther cars, but this, everybody, I hope you can pick it up on my camera because I love the blower on it. Yeah, it's a 67, it it's a 671 blower and that's a 440 Chrysler Dodge motor. Yep. And uh, it's a real and sweet it's car. Original. It's original. For, yeah, it's, it's, it's original except for the blower. It's all original. 67 Dodge RT. And in fact, her husband Butch, uh, my brother-in-law, he serviced this car when it was brand new in Kilburn Dodge in Decatur, Illinois. Wow. There was three of them triplets. No, two. There was two. There's two. I'm yeah. sorry. The, the the pink car and Butch's yellow and yeah. white when they, yeah. you and him drag they yeah. drag raced back in the 60s and oh, 70s yeah. with this. Wow, so you've had that, you've been there in your owners? Yeah, yes. on this, yeah, we've, yeah, on yeah. that, he, he had... Her and him's been doing this ever since the 60s. <laughs> yeah, and then when I got a little older, he put me in the garage. When I was 10, and he's had her painting on top, yeah. and had me painting on top because I was lighter than Butch. Wow, well, now, you we've know... we've done all this all these years. Butch sounds like an absolute top he guy. He was a killer dude, he was a great dude. Butch E. Horn was a great dude. Well, I hope now, you rest, great. rest in peace. I appreciate you guys sharing his story and the journey. Fancy, I'm so happy to have met you. Like I said, an absolute inspiration. Drag racing, blower cars, charges. Yeah. And I know what you guys are thinking. That will be me in the future because you like all the things that I like. Yeah, I like right, the pickup I mean, trucks. It, it and gets in your blood and it never gets out. I mean, when I was with my dad, you know, five, six years old in the garage he owned, I was literally sitting in the motor compartments watching him 
and we worked on a lot. He worked on a lot of the police department cars. Yep. And that when they'd come down there to get it, they'd get a kick out of it because I was sitting in the motor compartment. <laughs> the Crown Victorias. Yeah. Those and, ones. So, yeah. Old days. Yeah. yeah. Old days. I appreciate this so much, you guys. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Very I appreciate much. you talking. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ninety-three Model A, nineteen thirty-four. Carol, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. I love what you've got here. Come over here, stand in front of it. Now you've done the full frame of restoration yourself. Yes. So let's take me back before you started doing the restoration. When or how long ago did you um, get I this? I bought the car about three years ago. Okay. It had the original running gears, the original motor, transmission, rear end. It had uh, running boards. The fenders were gone, but I took everything off and threw it away except the hull of the body. Okay, because we wanted to have that all steel body. And then built all brand new. Well, the body was steel, mm -hmm. original, 1930 Model A. This is 1930 Model A. So that was still on the car as this well? This was put on the car when it was brand new in 1930. Wow. Not this. But this piece here. But this piece here. It's not perfect shape, but I love it. I wanted to keep it because of that. Because it came with the car. Yes. Of yes. course, we love that. Now, were you looking for a Model A? Not really. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at cars, and uh, actually, I went to a custom car dealer, uh, and it was sitting out in the front, kind of like in the junk pile. Yes. And I asked them what they wanted for it, and we made a deal, and I took it home. And rebuilt it and that's it yeah did the interior in it myself let's have a look and at that the first time i ever did an interior first time. first time i love it when i hear things like that because you all know that i'm doing my truck and it's my first restoration so when i hear that you did the interiors all yourself and this was the first time you're doing it wow and it looks so good it's first time so how did you um learn to do this for the first time and i just Trial and error. Trial and error. Now, this 1930 Model A, did you have a book or a manual to help you? This, this is a totally built as you go. Whatever you need, you know. Whatever you and need. And it's got full wheel disc brakes, positive track rear end, and it goes down the road, smooth as silk, run 80 mile an hour all day long. Does it have the um, rumble seat at the back? No. no. No, I have the fuel cell in the back. Okay. Because the original fuel tank is in front of the windshield yes. and it's a real safety hazard. So you can see I've got the trunk upholstered, but I've got the battery and the fuel cell in the back. Very good, because we do want to see that 383 stroker just yeah. standing out all on its own. 500 time. horsepower. 500 horsepower for this small car. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Carol, how long have you been coming to the Street Nationals? Uh, probably eight years. Eight years. That's my car there, too. That was the first one I brought. Let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> this is the first year they ever made a Chevelle, 1964. 64. And okay. it's got the same 383 stroker motor in it. Very nice. Very different to your Model A. Yes, yes. Total <laughs> different car. This is called a muscle car. Yes. And that's called a hot rod. A hot rod. Yeah. So uh, maybe next product will be a pickup truck. Will be a pickup truck. Yeah, Love it. Yeah. That would just complete the collection. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Wow. This is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate this so Thank much. Thank you for stopping and looking at the cars. Absolutely. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Thank you.
loving the gun medal 1952 Chevy pickup. Dwight, how are you today? Pretty good, how about yourself? Good. Awesome. I'm loving the color. I love that you've just kept it matte as well. And the, only th the other thing that drew me, I didn't know they had an LS swap in it, but before that is the dove on the top. It is cool, isn't it? It is cool. <laughs> well, tell me about that. I was going to say, it come with it whenever I bought the truck, it was on it. Okay. I, I figured some young kid had it before me. Maybe that come off his dad's car or something. I don't know. It, it stands out. Yes, it does. It draws attention. <laughs> and that's what you want from a car. And I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to leave this hood open so we can see that this is turbocharged LS. Yes. Which LS is it? Uh, six liter. Six old. Nice. But it is filthy. It's fine because you drive this around. Yes, I do. Everywhere. Yeah. And how long have you had this for? Probably about four years now. Four years, and you did the full restoration yourself? Yes. How big was that job? Well, I'm working on another one now, so I mean, both of them together is taking quite a while. I mean, it, I mean, I enjoy doing it, yeah. so, you know, that works. It's just fun. I enjoy okay. It. Now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you're working on two cars at the same time. Yeah. I have just recently come to realize how much work is involved. <laughs> how much hardware nuts and bolts is involved mm -hmm. in restoring just one car yeah and you're doing two side by side yes do it how do you stay organized uh well i'm retired for one thing <laughs> <laughs> and okay, that makes all the time. difference yeah i'll get yeah. all the time i need to do it <laughs> so you've got to be very organized because you know bagging up those oh, nuts and it's oh yeah and i lose half of them and everything yes. else, you know and the bags disappear that's the first thing that came to me when you said, you know, you're working on another car alongside. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that, that is a lot of work, but you yeah. enjoy it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And where did the passion for cars come from? Uh, since I was a kid, since I was probably about eight years old, yep. uh, I seen a, a 60 uh, Thunderbird. I was asking my dad what it was, you know, and he told me it must have been brand new because, I mean, it was super shiny. Nice. And uh, ever since then, I guess I'm a motorhead. You're a motorhead, you're a gearhead. Next question, how many cars do you have? Well, I got a 33 Plymouth. Uh, what else? I just sold a 32 Ford. That's not too long ago. I got, well, the 55 is what I'm working on now, and it's okay. about ready to go. Because your missus just told me that the only way you got away with getting this truck was because you convinced her that it was the year of her birth yep. and that you had to have it. Yep, pretty much. You did well. <laughs> Actually, it's supposed to be her truck. It's a, that's why you said yes. it's her truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awesome. I appreciate it so much. You Thank bet. you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, everybody. We all use golf carts. I think I see them more at the car shows than I do actually on the fairground. But this here is the first time that I'm seeing a classic golf cart. Now, it is a Cushman, I've been told, 1960. Back in the day, even the golf carts looked cool. Honestly, it's... Look at the front end they've got on it. It looks like almost like a car. So obviously I think this has been modified to an extent, but either way, a classic golf cart. Love it. You never know what you're gonna find. And I've seen my first classic golf cart here at the Street Machine Nationals. Love the Corvettes, I know I do, whether it's a classic or an absolute late model. Here we've got a C8, and yes, my top does match as I've been informed. <laughs> but this is looking absolutely stunning. Let's have a chat with Paul. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, Paul, come over here. Beautiful Corvette. You've got a brand new? Yes, I uh, actually ordered it in 2019, and it took until 2022 of to course. get it. But uh, yeah, I ordered it new. Uh, didn't see the color in Boston until I went and picked it up. Okay. It was a new uh, orange for 22. So I kind of... Was there a picture of the color at least? The online, there was pictures I'd seen, but nothing in person yet. So kind of took a risk with it, but and I'm, I'm happy with it. I bet you are. This is beautiful. And what color is it? It's amplified orange. Amplified orange. And it's actually a track coat. Okay, tell me about that. So the track coat goes on with the base coat and then a second a cloak coat on top and another cloak coat. Kind of gives it a... a trifecta kind of look to it. Uh, it's tough to tell looking at it, but... Okay. It's try, it tries to make it stand out more as opposed to being flat. Yes. Wow, this is beautiful. Thank you. And why the Corvette for you? You're very patient. You waited so many years. I've had a lot of different ones and 
always wanted a mid-engine. So I came out with these. This is actually my second one. This is your second I one? I had a 20 model when I came out and wasn't happy with the color I chose. So I wanted to go with orange on this one. Now, one of the things that I like about the C8 is that screen there inside has got many different functions. Oh, yes. You can do anything with this. That, and it's comfortable. So I daily drive this. Okay. I, I drive in the wind, snow, all you know, and it's comfy. I, I can get in there being six foot seven, squeeze yes. in, and, and it's one thing that really stood out to me when uh, Chevy designed this was... You would not have been able to fit inside the classic Corvette, so... No, I, I've had other Corvettes in the past, <laughs> yeah. and it was take it out on the weekend. You know, you, you get in it and get out. Ah. Yes. So it, they did a really good job designing this, and... And you can take it on the track, you can change yeah. it to turbo, drag racing, you can change it to snow, driving in the snow. Yeah, I've, I've driven it in the snow and it goes through it better than my uh, Silverado truck does. Wow. Surprisingly. Oh, it's a Corvette. It's an absolute <laughs> Corvette. Let's have a look here. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate this so much, but right, I am going to take a picture with your car. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Now, everybody, I have literally seen everything, I think, but I'm always going to keep getting surprised, that's for sure. Check out this. There's an actual coffin back here, and oh my goodness. Mate, can I get you on film? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What's your name? Kale Walters. Kale, I'm Rana, and I love the setup you have. Thank you. Come and tell me more, please. I mean, you. For starters, what car is it? It is a 1995 Cadillac Fleetwood Hearse. Um, it was uh, purchased in Wayne City uh, from Richardson's Funeral Home in uh, October 2021. I dug out of the garage. So, um, were these actually made for the funeral homes? It's made for the funeral homes. Okay. It was an actual legit funeral home used car. It was originally purchased in 90. I think, or late 95, whatever, from Superior uh, Funeral Company mm -hmm. uh, out of New Jersey. And it started its life in New Jersey for a funeral home over there. And were you looking for this? I was looking, I've been wanting one since I was a little kid. My family always thought Why? it was crazy. And <laughs> they're hand built cars. It's, yes. All these are all dime a dozen. These are extraordinary. And That's true. And you're telling me this is hand built? This is hand built. But all horses are hand built. Okay, interesting, interesting. I did from not the know factory, that. Factory, you get from the front bumper to behind the seat, and then the back is all your missing parts. And then it gets shipped to the uh, hearse and limousine company, and they stretch out the frame, cut the frame, and build the back on it. Of course, of course. So they're all custom built, but I put a lot of money into it. I've had a lot of fun with it. I bet you have. Of course, how could you not? Look at all the theme you've got here. You've got, oh my goodness, you know. It, it's a bit scary for me because <laughs> and I daily drive it and you daily drive it and what is the reactions you get on the street I get a little bit of everything a little bit of everything some people call me weird some people love it some people hate it but you have to love it because you've personalized it you've oh, themed yeah. your car and whether they like it or hate it they're looking at it and so I've, I've it's done, done it, its job and I've done used it in proms and weddings and that is so cool that is so cool And you got an actual casket. Mm -hmm. Two actual caskets. Two. But you've done a fair bit on the inside of this. You've made some modifications yourself. I've added some lights into there. I've added uh, aftermarket funeral lights right here, purple LEDs. Um... Nice. I can see why this would be a hit for going to the prom and um, oh yeah, gathering. Uh, eventually, gonna take it camping too. So. Well, you could actually sleep in the back there. Oh too. yeah, twin size <laughs> mattress sits back there just fine. <laughs> And I named her Morticia, after Morticia mm. Adams. Of course. There's the second casket. Oh, there is this casket. Nice job, man. Thanks. Looks great. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you.
All right, so introduce yourself. Tell me what car you've got first. Uh, Terry Sisla, oh, 1955 Chevy, two-door post car. Highly modified, and before we look more in detail about the car, you've been coming to the Street Nationals for many, many years, Street Machine Nationals, and you've been chasing them, even if they change locations. Yep. What is it about here? I mean, America has a lot of car shows. Uh, we all know I'm trying to chase them all. <laughs> so what is it about the Street Machine Nationals that you love so much? The people, the cars, the ingenuity. I mean, everybody's trying to change things up, do something different. There's definitely a big variety here. Yeah. I mean, I'm seeing the latest model Corvettes to absolute tea buckets and Model A's, and then of course the Camaros, and we've got the Tri-5s here as well. Sure. So sure. tell me about your 55. How long have you had it? I've had it for 25 years. Um, I bought it, the body was basically done. I redid the interior, redid the drivetrain, and uh, my family and I, I had to modernize it, of course, for my kids, because we had to have two car seats that were able to fit in the back of it. Of course. And uh, yeah, they love going to car shows, so we, uh, this is the only show that they don't go with me. <laughs> because you've already got such happy, fun-loving friends oh, yeah. there. Yeah, they pulling your legs all the love time. Love me to death, yeah. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the motor you've got here. It is a uh, 383 cubic inch small block with an 871 BDS blower running on E85, making just shy of about 900 horsepower. Wow. Wow. We love the Tri-5s, we love the body styles, but when you can just put an engine like that and take it over the top, why not? Runs nice and cool with the alcohol. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I am going to get you to turn this on, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> but before we do that, you have modernized many aspects of this. So we're talking air, but... No definitely... air conditioning. No. Yeah, I wish it had air conditioning, but no air conditioning. But the dash is original. Yes, yeah. I tried to keep as much as the car original as possible to keep it kind of like an old school look okay. with a modern day customized, doing the seats a little bit different. The interior is a little outdated. It's got the tweed on the door panels, which is going to be changed soon, but... Uh, is that original? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. No. It's like 1990s. All right. So... But one Change of the things you did do is, which is what threw me off, is how I differentiate between my 56, 55 and 57, is the fuel tank door. Right. So I thought maybe this is a 56, but you've changed the no, fuel we, tank. We changed it off, we put the gas tank on it. The fuel cell's actually in the trunk, so the lid's okay. in the trunk. And how do and, you fill up? Uh, well, do me a favor and put your hand on that Chevy emblem and pull up just a little bit. Okay. Sorry, got turned it off. It's all right. Oh, that's the um, safety switch. That's the safety. Just hold it right inside. Right. Okay. This is fun. There we go. There you go. Oh, there it so is. So there's a fuel cell. Okay, and um, you just open up and fuel right there. Yep, right there. Interesting. It'd be more convenient with an exterior port, but that's the way they had it set up, so that's the way I kept it. Okay. Well, Terry, let's turn this on and see exactly how loud it is. Okay. We're going to be doing that a fair bit here at the Street Machine Nationals. I haven't even gone over to Pro Street Alley, so that's going to be a lot of fun. But let's start off here. Love it, absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> you enjoy yourself. Is there any place we can see this or no? Not yep. yet. Not yet. It's not live, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a card. <laughs> Honestly, I walked past this and I kept looking and I'm talking and I'm kept looking back at your truck and I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. Chevy Super Sport pickup. Stephen, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you, sir. Now, let's, let's listen to this one. Gotta love that. Yeah. So, tell me, what exactly do you have here? So, my grandpa bought this truck new for a salesman. Okay. Nine months later, I got it. And, uh, few years after that I started messing with it while I was still in high school so so what year is this it's a 78 it was a stock two-wheel drive heavy half long bed grandpa ordered it with 220 gallon tanks air conditioning power steering power brakes just nice. basic stuff 
and uh, I wanted something different. And I didn't want a big block Chevy because those are pretty common, small blocks, everybody's got that. And my gearhead buddy in high school said, put a 409 in I'm like, what's that? This was 1980. He said, my uncles had all these, had 409s and all their Impalas during high school. So That's the hunt was on. So I had a 409 in the back in 80, put a Muncie four speed in it then, drove it every day, had a dual quad factory intake on it then. Almost sold it at one point, a couple of points, and then painted it in 83, took the body off, changed the color. This is 69 Camaro, garnet red. It's a pretty unusual color, and I wanted something burgundy that was unique. But a little and then, bit more red than burgundy. Yep, still had a stock chassis and had a small block in it then because I'd blown the first 409 up. And then the next year, <laughs> the next winter, took the body back off, and we did the work. We, I say mostly me, but put the straight axle in it that we literally dug out of the dirt of a junkyard. Um, I used factory Chevy truck four-wheel drive spring hangers. The, the holes were already in the frame and the engine cross member. These are relatively easy, relatively easy relatively. swap. Uh, at the same time, I found another 409, uh, put it in, used a Chrysler four-speed because the Muncie's wouldn't hold up. And at that same year, I did the... Uh, yeah. I did the narrowed rear end. I didn't have a four link at the time. The first version was, I moved the leaf springs inboard as far as I could and used the Mickey Thompson's, the biggest they had at the time, which is two inches smaller than these now. Two years later, wow. they came out with a bigger tire. So I re-narrowed the rear end, had to get rid of the leaf springs because they were in the way. So what Put, size is the tire actually? 33, 21, 5, 15. So it's a 19 inch tread on a 15 inch wheel. I do like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, with coil overs and four link. It's a three inch exhaust all the way out the back. The uh, air conditioner. I didn't, I took the air conditioning off because hey, you're in high school and who needs air conditioning? And then oh, yeah, you grow up and like, maybe and I then, want air conditioning and, and then you again. Smarter. But I didn't want the compressor under the hood okay. because it's got solid lifters in it. And at the time, GM just had the big giant compressor that would have sat yes, here. Yes, yes. So I didn't know what to do, and then I saw an article where a guy had put a, on a race car, he put an alternator on the front pinion mount of a nine inch Ford and was driving it off the drive shaft. And I was like, put it off the drive shaft. So I mounted the- I didn't the, even know uh, you could do that. Well, yeah, you can. It only works when it's running. You can see the pulleys there. There's a bracket on the far side that the compressor's mounted to the frame. There's a pulley welded to the drive shaft. Yes. The pulley and idler that you see here, that's to give it opposing force so it doesn't pull the drive shaft hard one way. It's got equal force on each side of the drive shaft to keep the drive shaft bearing centered. Yes, it only works when it's moving. I thought at best it would work at highway. It works in town. So just moving and it blows cold air. So I've got air conditioning. If it's not moving, then you won't be able to have air con. Right, right. But that's still such a cool yep. trick to know because yep. we're always trying to get more room inside that. Yeah, engine. right, right. And the less stuff you, stuff you can have, I mean, I've heard of, you know, putting the batteries in the back and stuff, but the air conditioning has always been under the oh, hood. Yep, yep. And they've got really small compressors now, but this, you know, I've kept this. This is the paint that was on it since 83. Um, Love the person. So it's all, yeah, that's a that's a 1980s truck thing. I mean, it was, everybody had their name on their truck. And I, I try and to, trying to keep job? it, period. What's that? The paint job is so good. It's it's in good shape, yeah. The interior I did, um, it's the original seat. Wow. Um, four speed, I added a Mallory in dash tack in the dash. Chevrolet off one there. That's a rev limiting tack, and then I bought the Chevy fuel gauge that goes here to go with that, and then added real gauges over there. I There's the SS completely. emblems, and I have the door panels. You could get material at the time to match this, so I had that done. Dash pads original to the truck. And are these the fans or speakers? I, yeah, I added those, yeah, yeah. Are they fans or speakers? They're, they're speakers. Yeah, speakers. fans is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a speaker. Okay, look, I mean, yep. because of yep. the air conditioning situation, but you do have air now, so. Love the fact it's a long bed. Yeah, you don't see many of them, and I'm not a huge fan of lowered long beds anyway. I mean, some of them are okay, but... Why not, sir? I have to ask you. I just don't think they look proportioned right when they're super low. Some do. Some are done really right. I've never been a huge fan of them. Short beds look great lowered. Short blip blip blazers look great really <laughs> tall. But with a straight axle, you know, they need, you need to be up in the air. It's a gasser style. I've always loved the gasers. That's why I put that axle in there. I've always loved but the look not, of a straight axle. But it's not so axle. much in your face because with the straight axle, you could have had this They're up really, really high. high. And I can't do that now because of squatting trucks oh. where they just 
because I can't raise the front now. They've ruined that for me. I was gonna like, I need to raise it up so I can, you can really see that axle. But, but it's interesting you say that um, the long beds are a little bit out of proportion when they get lowered. Yeah, well, right. I'll be interested um, with everybody's opinion in the comments. Yeah, yeah. To what happens when I finish my long bed and lower it. There you go. Well, yeah, and there's some, there's some good looking doolies here. I like doolies lowered, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah. But I mean, that's what I love coming here, just to hear the different opinions. But yeah, one of the things that called me, I'm like, super sport? Yeah. What's going on here? But obviously with the Impala, that's what's kind of taken off with it, the theme. The other thing, the uh, the intake manifold, the cross ram, it's a Mickey Thompson that they made back in the 60s. So it's a, it's a vintage speed piece. And to make it run correctly, there's been some known problems with them. The guy that helped me with the cam and flowed the heads and told me how to make the headers, talked me through how to cut the sides of that apart and there's a big chamber in now both those halves of that cross ram can exist where they normally don't and then a guy in springfield illinois made the headers for me custom out of stainless steel i ground the block all smooth back in the 80s ruined the 409 but you know it's only worth something if you're going to sell it so this truck is not going this. anywhere the stuff no. you have here it's so old school yep and that's right. the stuff that's going to last i mean you've got mickey thompson stuff here back here yep that's the stuff you just don't get these yep. days and i could have put edelbrock aluminum heads on it but you see them they're so common you expect to see them i wanted to stick with the original high performance heads i made this out of lexan back in the 80s and you can see its age power steering i wanted a power steering pump with a remote reservoir and this was before they made them aftermarket i went through the junkyard started opening hoods this is off a mercedes of some model i got the pump in the bracket modified it to fit the motor and then got a remote reservoir and it's different and unique i made the alternator bracket to get it down low so the engine shows it looks beautiful it looks These, absolutely beautiful this is made out of a uh, sink supply tubing for your house it's chrome plated copper and it's bendable and flareable get it at any hardware store so you get chrome fuel lines easy and cheap okay yeah so steve you've got one heck of a truck thank you appreciate it thank you okay you really do thank and you. um i appreciate you telling me about it all right the grill's an 80. so much happening and the people grill's... ask about the grill it's an 80 grill in 1980 was the, they, they did the square yes um and i wanted the 80 grill most of them were gray with chrome and when i went to the chevrolet dealership he said i see an 80 with chrome and an 80 sport with chrome i said what's a sport and he said i don't know let's order it the sport truck was an option they had in a short period of time and it had some blacked out stuff and some different graphics and one of the things the grill was blacked out with the chrome and i love the look of it and it's i've never never seen one before and you see very very few cents so 80 sport uh, is where the grill came from this is just gold tape with the I don't remember what these were off of, but I found emblems that fit right and mounted right and they were the style that I like to go in the places that Chevy put them at. I made this back in the 80s. Stainless steel, this is off an early Impala. It was all cut out of flat piece and then I painted the background the color of the truck and I just twisted that. Just unique touches. This is the stuff that I feel like draws people in. You know, the intake system's unique and then they 100%. see the engine and all the color. And, yeah. 100%, you put so much work and effort in this. You've built it all yourself with your hands. Truck's not going anywhere. It looks fabulous. And I don't trailer it. And you don't trailer it. I don't trailer it. it. I don't own a trailer. It. We drove it here. That's why it's got air conditioning. It gets about 11 miles a gallon. It's got highway gears in it. So it's, uh, I not drive it everywhere. Be on a trailer. If truck, you see it, it's you driven. Yep. Yep. It. Yep. You've got to drive Very the trucks. Good. Thank you so much, Thank Steve. You very much. Thank you. We got to stop and look at the C10s. They always look fabulous when they're done. Full resto mod. I'm thinking frame off restoration. Absolutely. Pat, how's it going? It's going good. How are you? Good. 1971. 1971 short bed, factory air, factory short bed. Wow, this is beautiful. And obviously the first thing that I asked is the color. Yep. House of Colors jet black. It's supposed to be the blackest black. Blackest black. Yep. Loving the rims. Tell me about that. We're 22 by 9, 22 by 11, US Mag Rambler one piece. That's the thing with the blacks, the chrome just looks so amazing. And you've kept this, you've restored it back to period correct as far as body lines and front ends? Uh, body lines, it's got airbrushed on trim. Um, airbrushed on as, trim? Yes, so that is not trim, that's painted on. Okay. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, so it takes away from imperfections of the, you know, the thin metal that they used on the trim that looks actually pretty cool i mean you're still able to see that it's a uh, chevy c10 
Okay. And that's been airbrushed. You know, this has been done so well that from a distance you wouldn't even be able to tell. Most people don't. Yeah, it's, it's got all the edges, everything, so it's got the definition to it. And you wanted to do that because of the black that you've got here. You really needed to just... Well, actually, so it's 68, 67, 68 trim on a 71 truck. Okay. So they, it doesn't actually fit on this truck if you were to put it on. But I liked the single line trim, so we went ahead and painted it on so it would fit perfectly. Just to give it a little different look than the 71. Why not? Why not? And what engine do you have here? Uh, it's a 5.3 LS motor. keep it as factory as possible so all the air and everything on it is still vacuumed as if it would be back in 1971 we just put a modern drivetrain in it okay just the modern drivetrain and you obviously you change the 350 to an ls correct get that overdrive and reliability and obviously uh wild wood brakes weren't on them yep we drive it everywhere nothing to take it four or five hours let's have a look at the interiors here I like that you've kept somewhat of a bench seat. Yes. I'll say somewhat because it does have a dent in the middle. Well, not a dent. So a, they call um, that a bolstered seat. A um, say the, it again. A bolstered. Bolstered, okay. The reason we did that is we wanted to keep the truck period correct so it still has the fuel tank behind the seat so it's almost impossible to put. You've kept the fuel tank there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we, like you said, the whole build with this truck is if you could get it in 71 with the all the new stuff on it. It's got the digital gauges that still look vintage. I mean, it's on air ride. You have to have to do it on air ride, right? <laughs> Restoring a seat and you, you gotta just either lower it completely to the frame and slam it, or you've gotta put it on air ride. Look at that, that's beautiful. Very nice. Yep, Made in Design Co. did it. it. Took about five months just to do this small interior. They wanted to do one off, something different. Is that how else. long usually it takes to do interiors? For good interior. Uh, you can buy the store-bought stuff out of the book and stuff, but I wanted something different than everybody else, so we did a different color. You have to be very patient when building a car. And have the money. <laughs> mm. Or have the right people to help you yes, out. <laughs> nice, and you've, um, it was a short bed at yep, the time. Factory yep, factory short bed. That's what we, uh, we tried to find all the best factory parts we could before we put it together. So that's got the best steel on it. And as straight as it could be. Very cool. Now in 71, um, did they have the windows, um, the triple window, or was it a one? The window? slider? Yes. Yes, you could get the slider option back then. Okay. Um, we just have the big back window. Yes. The truck has air, so. You don't, Exactly, you don't need to have the slider windows. But you still kept this, the original little slide out window. Yeah, so the vent windows, you can't really do anything with those. Um, you can get one piece, but it's a, it's a whole thing. Is it? And it's pretty neat to just cruise on a nice day like this with it. And have those open? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate this, Pat. Yeah, no I'm Thank always you. interested in seeing um, CTNs and how they get done, of course. But yeah, this looks very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so I much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Have a good one.